Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and today we're going to do our March update, recap, budget, health, life, all the things. Um, I do have my coffee and this super sweet little bunny with glasses to go cut. Let's bring him over here. I love him. He is so cute. I got him the whole package at TJ Maxx or Marshalls for like $5. It just feels so springy to me. Okay, I have a notebook with some information. Oh, my computer, I hit some buttons. With some information written down that I thought I would share with you this month. So this is recapping the month of March. So we're in April. Kind of like convinced myself of these things. Okay, we'll start with health. So health-wise, I have lost one pound in the month of March. Not mad about that. I had um, a flu bug. Oh, did I have a flu bug? And from Friday to Monday, I lost five pounds. And then my cycle came and I gained seven or eight pounds with fluid, typical. And when all that was said and done, I netted out at one pound loss this month. <laughs> so take that for what it's worth. My body went through the ringer towards the end of the month. So I'm not mad about a one pound weight loss. Um, I could have done without the flu, but there you have it. Um, my face, if you've noticed, all the red is mostly gone. There's still some healing happening on my lip and on my cheeks and definitely on my nose is still peeling. Went to the dermatologist. If you're not aware, I had a full body check. I highly recommend you do that, especially if you're in our age group. My demographics are average about 45 to 65 years old. If you're younger, you still need to have a body check at the dermatologist and they literally check your skin from head to toe. She was digging around in my hair, my face, my neck, between my fingers and toes, everywhere. And that's how they determine if you have any suspicious looking moles, marks, freckles, if things are changing. I can't see back here. And right here on the back of my neck, she found a suspicious looking mole freckle or mole, I think it was a mole or a spot because it really hadn't developed into anything yet. So she took the freezing stuff, froze all over my nose, on my lip, under my lip, my chin, on both sides of my face. So really from my eye orbits down, I had a tremendous amount of precancerous sun damage. So she froze all that off. Uh, the concern right now is my upper lip. It's, um, the third time that I have had that checked or burnt, froze off. So I go back in two months and they're going to take a look, see if it's healed, what's going on with that skin. And we may do a biopsy just to make sure that it is not progressing. If it is, or if they determine that I need something else, I guess there's some chemo therapy creams that I can put on these different spots to try to help with the sun damage, precancer, to avoid any kind of basal cell or melanoma. So that's, the, the treatment is healed for now and now we just have to wait and see once all my skin has healed. On my neck, I had a biopsy back here. They took, I don't know, the size of a round ibuprofen circle out of my neck and, um, it came back as abnormal. So it wasn't cancer and it will, it is the type of mold that can turn into a melanoma. So if you have, she drew a picture for me and over here is perfectly normal tissue, nothing to worry about. And over here is melanoma. Mine was moderate. So it was right in the middle and they wanted to, the, the pathologist recommended that they remove more tissue around it to make sure that they get it all so it does not turn into any kind of uh, cancer. So I went in and she had to open up my skin about this wide. She said it was like a leaf or an eye shape. They needed to get a circle in the middle, but you have to cut 
this shape so they could stitch it together. I have five stitches inside, five stitches outside, an incision about this long, and I'm just keeping Aquaphor on it twice a day till the tissue heals, and then I'll go back next week and I will have the stitches removed from that. Have not heard back from the pathology, which is a good thing. She said that if, you know, if the pathology comes back, that maybe there was still some abnormal tissue in the sample, then we would have to remove some more. But if they don't call me, then the pathology is pretty much fine and they will send me a letter. Plus I go back in next week anyway and have the stitches removed. So we'll talk about the pathology at that point. Um, she was very clear that it was not, it was not cancer at this point. It is pre, it's all pre-cancer. And these are things that may or may not turn into cancer, but experience and time and testing tells them that these things need to be removed so they don't become cancerous. Um, and then I have like some sunspots on my face. There's some sunspots and age spots on my head. I have some like really bumpy things, but nothing to worry about. So I took care of that. The last thing I need to do in 2022 health wise is my mammogram and I will have that done next week. And then I have had all of my 50 plus year testing shots, vaccines taken care of. So there's the health portion um, for the house. So in March, this is kind of house finance. My finances are all over the place this month. I really wasn't able to do too much because I had to buy a new furnace air conditioner unit. Um, my air conditioner was from 1989 and my furnace was purchased in 1986. So they started building these condos in 86 is probably when they purchased the furnace. 1989 is when they were sold and people moved in and that's most likely when they purchased the air conditioner. So these are some old units and they needed to be replaced. So to make that happen, I did a, do a refi on my condo, which was fantastic because I got a much lower interest rate than when I originally purchased. So my mortgage payment doesn't change, but I was able to take a cash out in order to pay cash in essence for the furnace and air conditioner because my interest rate on my mortgage would have been much less than the interest rate if I had to use my credit card or any penalties for cashing things out. So it just made financial sense for me to do a refi, which I was gonna do anyway, and just take a little bit of a cash out off my the equity that I have in my condo. So I did that. I also added a whole house humidifier. My house is very dry. I've been struggling with this for years. The poor cats have dandruff in the winter. Um, and while I was, doing this and putting in this whole system, I opted to have the additional uh, humidifier. So my air conditioning system, all said and done was $10,850. And that's the air conditioner, the furnace, the humidifier, installation, the whole shebang. So I had that done. Well, I did all of that and I paid cash for all of that. Well, I actually put it on credit cards and then I paid it right off when the cash out came to me. So at the end of the day, I paid $500 towards my voice credit card and I paid $300 towards my Capital One credit card. Um, I also put some money in my savings account this month. Now, I do not have any money going into my savings challenges this month into my envelope that I usually have out. I don't think I have any, oh, well, I do. I have $10 that's gonna go into my um, challenge that I have where I save my dollars or save my money from the money I give myself for cash each week. So what I do each paycheck is I take $100. So that's $200 a month. I use that $200 a month for anything and everything. Coffee, if I'm out with friends, if I wanna grab some food, if it's not a regular grocery trip that I've budgeted for, if I need something above and beyond, if I need to, you know, whenever I'm out and about and I need 
to purchase something. Go to the pharmacy, I try to use my cash. So I give myself $100 every two weeks. So I have from my first two weeks of March, $10. So I'll get that taken care of into my envelope. I don't have any $1 bills, they're still in my wallet. I took the monies, the $100, plus some extra that I had saved up to purchase an Apple Watch. I don't have it yet. A friend of mine, thank you, Kathy Baker, um, purchased the watch some time ago, um, the one that I was looking at and is selling it to me. She hasn't even taken it out of the package yet, so details aren't mine to share. But anywho, she had this watch that I'm perfectly happy with. And so she gave it to me at a little bit of a discount. I sent her the money. So I used all the cash that I had taken out this week. All that to say, I only have $10 <laughs> to put in my cash savings for the end of the year. And I don't have any $1 to contribute. And I haven't pulled the change out of my purse yet either, but that's irrelevant. Also, I'm going on a road trip or... Yes, I'm going on a road trip, and so I need to go to the bank tomorrow and get more cash out for my April and spending. And what I will use that cash for on this road trip is coffee again, if I need to get something to eat, if I stop at a gas station and want a snack, if I want like a little souvenir along the way, I'll try to use my cash for that and not charging up my cards because the goal is to pay off these cards. So speaking of that... Because I did a refinance, I do not have to pay mortgage. I did not have to pay in March. I do not have to pay in April. And I will get whatever escrow was in my escrow account sent back to me shortly. All that to say, I'm paying off my voice credit card in April. I don't have all these monies yet. So in April, my voice credit card will be at zero. And I will tell you how much that will be. It's about $1,400 I owe. I don't have an exact amount. That will be a zero. So that credit card will be paid off in April. I will write that down. Which will leave me entirely with one credit card and that is my Capital One card. That credit card is sitting at approximately $5,000 and all of my focus and snowballing is gonna be going to paying off that card, which I hope to have paid off this year. We'll see. But it feels good to know that I have paid off, well, I have a little story time with my Kohl's, but I paid off my Kohl's, I paid off my dental bill, um, and I will have paid off my voice. So that leaves me with one credit card to pay off. And then I'll start working on my car. Now, um, my Kohl's charge. The other thing that happened in March, it was a very eventful March, and all this happened in one week, except for the furnace and air conditioner. But I woke up and my Keurig died. Not okay. If any of you have watched my channel for any amount of time, coffee is everything to me. So I decided that I was going to go on Kohl's and see what they had. I really wanted, and I have wanted for some time, but I couldn't justify the purchase because I had a coffee maker and I have a coffee pot in the garage, but I'm gonna sell that. I have a grind and brew from Keurig or from Cuisinart in my garage. I don't use that function and it's big and I didn't, I don't use it. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna sell that on pick on the buy, sell, trade website. It's a $200 coffee maker, I'll be able to sell it. And I've had it for years, it's not a current purchase. I've had it for many years, I just don't use it. Anywho, I want, I was looking at the Keurig uh, machine that brews a whole pot, a 12 cup pot, and has the single serve. And then I also looked at the Cuisinart brand that is the exact same, makes a 12 cup pot, it also, um, brew single serve and it uses the K-Cups and it has the refillable. And so I chose to go with the Cuisinart. I've been through two Keurigs already. My water is hard here and I use my coffee maker multiple times a day. And I've just decided that Keurig is not durable enough for me. I don't wanna keep replacing it. So this time I went with the Cuisinart and I've had good luck with that brand. 
it's they're the exact same machine the only difference is i have to remove one piece and put in another if i want to use a reusable filter but it takes k-cups it and i do use the reusable little k-cup filter um because i don't like all the waste of k-cups again it doesn't matter but this machine is sitting on my in my coffee station and it makes me happy so it was $200 and I had a coupon that I was able to use and I had some gift cards. So I paid $131 for this $250 coffee maker, which makes me happy, but I had to put it on my Kohl's charge in order to use the money, but I will pay the Kohl's charge off in April. So and that that's typically how I operate with my Kohl's charge now. I If I use it, I pay it off. I don't... Um, oh, and I got $30 Kohl's cash for purchasing that coffee maker as well. So that was kind of cool. So I will pay off my Kohl's charge that one, you know, I run a zero balance on that one. And that's what I will also be doing with my voice credit card. My voice credit card um, is through the bank that I work for. And you can choose your category of point so you get one and a half 1.5 points per dollar spent towards gift cards cash backs all of that stuff but if you whatever category you choose you get three points back per dollar spent so on that card it's going to become my gas card i chose gas as my category for the next 90 days and i will use that to charge my gas pay it off each month and then I can build up points for a trip or whatever. It's just points based. And then eventually when I get my Capital One paid off, I will do the same thing with Capital One or I will choose one of the other cards and I will put all my expenses and pay it off each month. Right now, I'm just not comfortable charging on this cards when there's currently a balance. I want to pay them off and then I will go and start this charging payoff cycle, collecting the points. That's a long-term term goal, but that is definitely something you have got to be committed to. I do not recommend that anybody, plus I'm not a financial person anyway, I'm not sure why you would be taking advice from me, but don't do what I do because that was my original goal and it didn't pan out very well for me, you know, with life, but anyway, so um, long-term goal, pay everybody off and then utilize the cards for their individual benefits with Kohl's. It happens to be the 30% coupon, um, and Kohl's cash with my voice card. It's 3%, three points back per dollar I spend on gas. And plus you need to use your cards and pay them off in order for your credit to be good. And then once I get capital one paid off, and obviously these are going to be around for emergency situations as well, even though I do have an emergency fund. So, and I was able to put a little chunk of change from my cash out into my savings account because I didn't, it gave me a little more than what I thought I would need. So I have that money for any future repairs that need to happen on the condo. And I'm also looking at a couple of things that I'm not sure if I'm gonna do or not to improve the value of my home. So I think that is it for my world for the month of March. Recap, I was sick. I had some pre-cancer removed. I lost one pound. I have a new air conditioner, furnace, and humidifier. I was able to pay $800 towards my debt this month, and I bought a new coffee maker. And I went on a trip to Canada. Good days all the way around. So I hope this was helpful or motivational to you because that really is the goal is to motivate you to kind of take stock in your life and your home and your budget and your finances and make it work for you instead of being reactive and having to work so hard to get all these things lined up. All right, everybody. I hope you have a great day and I will talk with you later.